The F.W. Fitch Company presents the Fitch Bandwagon, starring Alice Bay. You never know just how much I love you. You never know just how much I care. And Phil Harris. Won't you come with me to Alabama? Let's go see my dear old mammy. She's frying eggs and brawling ammy, and that's what I like about this song. <laughs> Let's go back to a few minutes ago. The Jack Benny program has just finished, and we find Phil Harris walking down the hall here at NBC. Hooray for Hollywood. Hey, Curly. Hey, Curly. Oh, hiya, Frankie. Hey, where you going? Down the hall. Jackson wants to see me. Hey, ukulele Ike. What's the <laughs> trouble with you, kid? What's the matter? What was wrong with you on the show today? Why? Why? Oh, kid, you're murdering that guitar. <laughs> Are you sure that that guitar of yours was toned? Tuned? What's that? <laughs> oh, Frankie, what's the matter with you? Oh, don't pick on me, Curly. I don't feel good. <laughs> I ain't been able to sleep a wink for the past two weeks. Well, then, Frankie, you ought to do something about it. Yeah, maybe I ought to start going to bed night. <laughs> Frankie, I don't know why I even put up with you. You're the worst guitar player I ever heard. You're tone deaf. You can't follow the beat. And you always play off key. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky I'm in your band, ain't it? <laughs> all right, all right. Forget about it. Now, look, I want you to hold the band a few minutes because when I get through with Jackson, I want to run over a number. Yeah. Okay, Curly. All right. Now, let's see. Here's Jack's dressing room. Hmm. <laughs> Look at this notice on the door. Wanted. Use Foxtail for 1919 Maxwell. <laughs> well, he wants to see me. I guess I better go in. Hiya, Jackson. You sent for me? Oh, hello, Phil. <laughs> Phil. Where are your manners? Don't you know better than to barge into a dressing room without knocking? Well, I'm sorry. I might have been in my slip. My underwear. <laughs> now, close the door, will you? My head is getting cold. <laughs> okay. Look, uh, Jackson, uh, you wanted to see me, huh? Yeah, sit down, Phil. I've been meaning to talk to you for some time. But you see, Phil, I... Uh... Well, well, what's up? Well, it's about your contract. Contract? Yes, you know, that piece of paper you have that starts out to whom it may concern and ends up with an X. <laughs> oh, that. Yeah, you see, this is March, and your contract is nearing its expiration. Yeah? When does it expectorate? <laughs> well, do me a favor, will you? For once, try not to be stupid. Huh? Force yourself. Oh, Jackson. <laughs> The way you talk, I'm a moron. No, no, Phil, you're not a moron. You haven't made that yet. <laughs> I mean, don't get delusions of grandeur, you know. What do you mean? I ain't got nothing. I'm as healthy as you are. <laughs> I'm not satisfied on my own show. I have to come over here for that. <laughs> what I have to say is... What I have to say is very important. Perhaps it would be better if we discussed it later. Say it's your home. My home? Yeah, you have one, haven't you? <laughs> oh, of course not. Me and Alice is children of nature. We're two carefree nymphs who gamble on the meadow with gay abandon. <laughs> Phil, remind me not to be invited over here again. <laughs> Where did you get an expression like that? Well, on my show, I ain't as stupid as I am on yours. <laughs> well, so far, you've been holding your own, brother. <laughs> Listen, Phil, I'll see you later at your house. Oh, you're huh? coming out the house. I'll see you okay, later. Okay, oh. so long, Jack. Hey, Phil, the band's still waiting. Are we going to run over that number? Yeah, Frankie, wind them up. I'll be right with okay, you. Okay, Curly. Long ago in New Orleans. On a little street of green There I heard a crazy band That 
was where the blues began. There was Memphis Joe with his hidey ho moaning on his saxophone. There was Slipphorn Slim, you've heard of him, and his laughing slide trombone. Peg Leg Pete playing hot and sweet on the bacon pot of can. Dancers swayed as they played, that was where the blues began. There was Dog Face Jet with his clarinet hitting high notes up and down. Smokey Moke was there with his slick black hair beating his drums like a clown. While the bugger 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 of the big brown jug by a hepcat dressed in jeans, that was where the blues were born in New Orleans. Peg Leg Pete and his violin made a vacant pot of tin. Hollers out, let the folks come in. Dog face Chet and his clarinet, the cutest pair I ever met. Broke his reader, I'd been there yet. Memphis Joe and his saxophone, slip on slim and his trombone. They tuned up and settled down, then they all went to town. There was big nose test from the greasy vest weaving in her glass of beer. There was gambler Jake playing table stakes with a seaboat engineer. Natchez Lil, she was dressed to kill, singing love songs about her man. As she moaned, people groaned, that was how torch songs began. Then a cat named Sam in from Alabama started shooting up the flow. Everybody broke through the pistol smoke, fault the windows and the door. While the roar, roar, roar of the 44 busted up those happy scenes. That was how the blues were born in New Orleans. Ladies, whether you wear your hair up or down, long or short, you can win compliments on its loveliness if you use Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo. For Fitch contains a special reconditioning action that makes your hair soft to touch, lovely to look at. Fitch's reconditioning action beautifies your hair by its thorough cleansing process. It dissolves and floats away all traces of dirt and dandruff from the hair and scalp. The antiseptic cleansing leaves your scalp tingling with that clean feeling. Your hair shining like twinkling stars and easy to manage. Best of all, Fitch's reconditioning action works equally well for all colors and textures of hair in hard or soft water. Buy an economical bottle at drug or toilet goods counters or have professional applications at your beauty or barber shop. Use Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo regularly. See how it adds exciting glamour to your most becoming hairstyle. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Miss Fay, don't you recognize me? Julius Abruzio, the grocery boy. Oh, of course, Julius. Come in. Gee, you're all dressed up. You look so nice in that blue suit. Your hair all slicked back. And your shoes all shine. Yeah. Now smell me. <laughs> Must I? Go ahead. Don't be scared. I got on some cologne for men only. You have? Yeah. It's called Mad Bull Number Five. <laughs> Julius, you're not delivering groceries on Sunday. Nah, this is purely a social call. Well, that's nice of you. Yeah, ain't it? Yeah. You know what I did yesterday? What, Julius? Well, when I heard you was on for fish shampoo, I went out and bought all I could just to help you, adored one. <laughs> you did? Yeah. At home in my room, I got 48 cases of it. <laughs> That's awfully sweet of you, Julia. Yeah. The only trouble is, now I have to sleep on the fire escape. <laughs> oh, that must be Phil. Your husband? Mm hmm. Take me in your arms, beloved. We shall die together. Oh, Julia, don't be silly. You run along now. Come on. Okay. Farewell, soulmate. <laughs> hey, you. Hey, Abruzio. Come here. Oh, hello, Mr. Harris. Look, what are you doing coming around here on Sunday? Calling on my best girl. Best girl? Listen, Bruzy, baby Alice is only five years old. <laughs> now beat it. Okay, Mr. Harris. Baby Alice. If that guy ever knew what was going on, he'd blow his brains out. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, hello, Phil. I heard you drive in. Hiya, kid. Hey, what's up, Jennifer? Well, Jack Benny called you twice. He said he's coming out here tonight. Yeah, no, I know. He told me. Gee, it's funny, Jack, coming here. He hasn't been to our house since the day we got married. That's right. You know, I've always wondered if he enjoyed himself at our wedding. He acted so strange. Enjoyed himself? Oh, he must have. He's still wearing the shoes he cut off the back of our car. <laughs> Have you any idea what Jack wants? No, I don't know what he wants. He said something. I don't know. He was talking about something about next year's program. Next year? Oh, Phil, you don't suppose he's thinking of... Firing me? Nah. (laughs) Perish the thought, beautiful. Jackson couldn't operate without Harris. After all, who'd wheel him on and off? Don't be so sure of yourself. Think it over. What do you actually do on that program? Do? Are you kidding? What do I do? What do I do? Well, I come in there every day, and I walk in, and I... I, uh... Well, I... And then, uh... Well, uh... Well, I... My, how do you handle all that in a half an hour? (laughs) Yeah, I guess you're right. They have been spreading me a little thin over there lately. Come to think of it, uh, Jackson's a little sore anyway, you know. He's sore at the band since we did that show from Nashville. Well, what happened there? Ah, uh, wasn't nothing. Only each musician showed up at the broadcast with a coon dog and a jug. <laughs> well, that was awful. Oh, Jackson didn't mind that much. But all through the program, the guys kept spitting watermelon seeds into the tuba. <laughs> well, suppose Jack is thinking of dropping you. What are you going to do about it? Oh, dropping me? I can't stand for that. I got to be with him. Hey, look, I got it. Maybe we can play on his sympathy, you know. Tell him we're broke or something. Oh, Phil, he'll never believe that. He knows I've been making pictures for years. (laughs) So what? Tell him you blew your wad trying to keep your brother out of Tehachapi. (laughs) Very funny, but it so happens Tehachapi is a woman's prison. Well, that's why it costs so much. (laughs) But you know, honey, seriously, I'd feel awful funny about not being with old Jackson. Gee whiz, I've been with him 11 years now. I gotta stay with him, honey. I got to. I... Well, even if it means taking less money. Well, don't... (laughs) Don't feel too badly, Phil. It's always darkest before dawn.
Hello, Fuller Brush Man. <laughs> oh, come in, Jack. We've been expecting you. Oh, Alice, I wanted to fool you. Gee, it's good to see you again, Jack. How are you? Fine, fine, fine. Bill's upstairs. I'll call him. Huh? No hurry, Alice. Well, you have a nice home here. Tell me, how are your children, little Alice and Michael? <laughs> no, Jack. Alice and Phyllis. Oh, yes, yes. Phyllis is the girl. No. <laughs> no, they're both girls. Oh, of course. It's so nice to have one of these. I mean, these are both. I mean, two, two girls. <laughs> Why don't you Two sit girls, down? I meant. Why don't you sit down, Jack? Thank you, thank you. My, it's a lovely fireplace, but aren't you folks a little extravagant? Extravagant? Yes, you have two and iron. <laughs> <laughs> well, just make yourself comfortable, Jack. I'll tell Phil you're here. Thank you. My, Alice is a wonderful girl. So sensible, too. I wonder if Phil would want to sell her. No, <laughs> Thinking of, I get the wildest ideas as I open that checking account. <laughs> Hope I don't have any trouble with Phil though for next season. If he'll just understand my position, after all, I've got a big cast, Mary's mother. Hello. Oh, hello. You're little Alice, aren't you? Uh huh. You remember me, Uncle Jackie? Oh yes, I've talked to you on the telephone. That's right. I don't believe I know this other little lady. This is my little sister, Phyllis. Phyllis, this is Mr. Benny. Hello, Phyllis. You're not afraid of Uncle Jackie, are you? Are you really, Mr. Benny? That's right. Well, prove it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, prove it? Yes, go ahead. Do something stingy. <laughs> You're, you're Daddy's little girl, aren't you? Come on, Daddy's little girl. Whose little girl are you? All right. <laughs> Sorry I started. Maybe I'll have better luck with the other one. Alice, uh, what do you have there? Our piggy bank. It's full of quarters. Quarters? Oh, well, how'd you get it so full? Everyone who comes to see Mommy and Daddy gives us one. <laughs> Are you going to give us a quarter, Uncle Jackie? Well, I, I'd like to. Let me see if I have one in my wallet. Oh, look, Phyllis. A pocketbook made like a little mattress. <laughs> No, no, it's not a mattress, honey. You see, I keep my watch in there, and the ticking fools you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jackson. Oh, murder. <laughs> Let me see here. I think this is a quarter. So hard to tell through the green mold. <laughs> Put it in the bank, Uncle Jackson. All right. Here you are. Well, drop it in. My fingers must be sticky. I I ate a Tootsie Roll on the way over here. There. Hiya, Jackson. Hey, what are you doing? Robbing my kid? Of course not, Bill. I, I just put a quarter in their bank. Oh, shucks, and I missed Haley's Comet, too. <laughs> Don't be so smart, Phil. I would have put in a dollar, but I, I see it won't fit through the slot. It will if you fold it. <laughs> I was talking to your father. <laughs> all right, kids. All right, kids. Now take your bank and run along because Uncle Jackie and I got business to talk over. Go on. All right, Daddy. Well, Jackson, what do you want to see me about? Well, it's about the show, Phil. Do you see, uh, next year is, uh, is a new season, and after all... You've been with me for 11 years now. And... Now, look, Jack, and I can explain about those coon dogs, and anyway, them, them watermelon seeds, why, they gave the tuba a rippling rhythm effect. No, no, Phil, it's just that next year... I'll... Hold it a minute, Jackson. i got to get the phone. It's in the den. Oh, of course. Hello? Hiya, Phil. It's Frankie. Oh, yeah. Hey, I found out why Jackson come out to your house. You did? Yeah, he's afraid of losing you. I overheard him tell his producer he'd do anything to hang on to you for next year. <laughs> oh, Frankie. 
Oh, this is great. Yeah. You know that Alice and I thought... Uh, hit him for plenty, Phil. Let him have both barrels. He's a sitting duck. <laughs> Oh, gee, this is great news, Frankie. Thanks a lot. And look, yeah. I'll let you know how I make out. Okay, okay. Curly, so long. Sorry to keep you waiting, Jackson. As you know, it's business. And uh, now, uh, you were saying... Uh... Yeah, you see, my sponsor renewed my program for next year, and I thought I might be able to squeeze you in somewhere. <laughs> Well, I don't know about next year. You know, after all, uh, I got my own show now. Well, I realize that, Filthy, but I might be persuaded to give you uh, a little more money. Yeah, well, that's nice, Jack. Uh, now, look, I... look, Phil, look. Now, I've been paying you $85 a week this year. <laughs> but considering, I mean, after all, you have a wife and two children and prices are a little higher now, next year I'm prepared to give you an even 90. <laughs> Ninety bucks. Oh, Jack, that ain't no money. Why, it costs us that just for food. Food? Don't you grow anything around here? <laughs> Stop it, will you? And besides, it's plenty expensive bringing up two kids. You mean your children aren't working yet? <laughs> Of course they're not working. And anyway, Jackson, you don't need me on your program. You got Dennis Day. What's he got to do with it? Well, you know how he imitates everybody. Well, yes, he's a clever kid. Well, one of your writers told me as soon as Dennis Day gets my voice down pat, you're going to let me go anyway. <laughs> but, Phil, that may take him a year yet. <laughs> Besides, you got to stay around to coach him. He can't do it alone. I'm sorry, Jackson. I'm sorry, but it just ain't worth for a while for that kind of dough. Hey, you're out of your mind. Think, $90 a week. Jackson, it ain't enough. Well... I might go just a wee bit higher. I mean, what figure did you have in mind? Fifteen hundred bucks. <laughs> Fifteen hundred. <laughs> but Phil, hot shot, <laughs> Patrillo boy. <laughs> Fifteen hundred dollars. That's more than I spend in a year. I'm sorry. That's my figure. You can take it or leave it. Now, look, Phil. Please, please. Listen, Phil. Listen, my boy. Listen. Listen Jackson, to me. Jackson, you're hurting me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, look. Look, I'm... <laughs> Phil, look, I I'm willing to be reasonable. I'm a just man. I'm offering you 90 and you want 1500 I'll compromise. Compromise? I'll give you $95. <laughs> and your boys can spit in the tuba all they want. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jackson. It ain't no go. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll hurt myself. I'll give you $100 a week. Well, I don't know. $100 you'll give me, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't want to put you in no spot because you need me, Buster. So I'll tell you what I'll do. Just to help you out, I'll take it. Thanks, Phil. It's a deal. You have my word. Do you two businessmen mind if I come in? Oh, not at all, Alice. Come right in. Phil and I have just come to terms. Everything is settled and hunky-dory. Oh, I'm so glad. Phil said he'd feel terrible if he wasn't part of your show next year. He did? Mm-hmm. Why, he told me now that he has his own show, he'd even take less money. <laughs> less money? In that case, the deal is off. But, Jackson, we settled on a hundred. I don't care. You gave me your word. Bill Harris, don't pull that on me. You've been with me long enough to know my word doesn't mean a darn thing. <laughs> But, Jackson, All you right, said... go ahead. See if I care. Starve next year. Starve? Oh, come now, Buster. This wife of mine has money upstairs. We ain't even counting. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't... Yes, and it so happens Phil's doing fine on his own Look, show. wait a minute. Besides, now. Dennis Day promised me two guests. Wait a minute, Phil. Not only that, Phil has six pairs of yellow shoes. So darn cool, and I just made five new records. Wait a minute! <laughs> All right, I'll do it. You're not worth it, but next year I'll pay you $100 a week. Well, that's more like it. Thanks. Gee whiz. I'm glad there's no hard feelings. Well, I'll have to be going. Okay, I'll walk you to the door. All right, I'll let myself out. <laughs> By the way, Phil. Yeah. The uh, first week, your check will be ninety nine seventy five.
What's that for? Yeah, I put a quarter in your kid's bank. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Actions speak louder than words, and so do the results of Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo. For Fitch removes dandruff completely the first time you use it. Fitch is the only shampoo made whose guarantee to remove dandruff with the first application is backed by one of the world's largest insurance firms. And it's so easy to use. There are just three easy steps. First, do not wet the hair with water. Just apply Fitch directly to the dry scalp and massage briskly. This antiseptic shampoo penetrates the thousands of tiny hair openings on the scalp, dissolving all traces of dandruff. Second, add water gradually. Continue to massage. You'll be delighted with the rich, abundant lather that forms to carry away the dissolved dandruff. Third, rinse thoroughly. Since Fitch is completely soluble, only an ordinary water rinse is needed. Just one, two, three steps and your hair is sparkling, clean, free of offensive dandruff. Use Vitch's dandruff remover shampoo regularly. The results will tell you why it's the favorite of millions. Vitch is spelled F-I-T-C-H. Phil, it was nice of Jack Benny to drop over here today. Yeah, but I think all that talk about money got him a little rattled. Rattled? Why? Well, he just walked out smoking a bottle of Fitch shampoo. week when the F.W. Fitch Company again brings you the Fitch bandwagon with Alice Fay and Phil Harris. This program was written by Joe Connolly and Bob Moser, directed by Paul Phillips, with original music composed and conducted by Walter Sharp. Included in the cast were Janine Ruth, Anne Whitfield, Walter Tetley, and Elliot Lewis. Alice Fay appears to the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Jack Benny appeared to the courtesy of Lucky Strike Cigarettes. They're so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy. I have a wild and a fox in the sun. Then use Fitch's Ideal Hair Tonic Daily. It makes your scalp tingle with that feeling of new life and pep. Pep up your scalp and give your hair that well-groomed look with Fitch's Ideal Hair Tonic. Bill Foreman speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.